It's the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. One, two, three, four. Garage Guys Report. Garage Guys Report. It's the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. It's the Garage Guys Report. It's the Garage Guys Report. Yeah. It's the Garage Guys Report. Yeah. It's Motorsports news for you. Yeah. It's the Garage Guys Report. Uh huh. It's the Garage Guys Report. Oh, yeah. It's the Garage Guys Report. It's motor. Welcome back to the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. It is October the 10th. Uh. If you're watching this on the exclusive uh, premiere, you're on playback. Shout out to you for being up late because that's how we do it here. But it's motorsports news for you. It's the Garage Guys Report. We got some news to break down on this episode. We got some voicemails. We have a new caller of the month to crown. That's correct. A brand new Mr. October is uh, taking his reign after the votes. Shout out to everyone that took the time to vote on Twitter. Because the new caller of the month on the Garage Guys Report is none other than Mr. Super NASCAR fan Andrew. Shout out to you. Congratulations on the title because you are now Mr. October. So for the rest of this month, you'll be leading off our voicemails. Appreciate everybody for calling in as well. Uh, We've got some voicemails to run into today after the Roval race where we saw AJ Allmendinger win. Uh, NASCAR was definitely a fun time. Uh, it was a sweaty time this weekend. If you were on playback.tv slash garage guys watching the race live while we were sweating bets out, you know, we had some winners, we had some losers. We had a great DFS day. So for all the sports betters that watch this show, uh, yeah, wasn't the worst, wasn't the best, but we got out of it. We got Vegas coming up next week. Really excited for that. Um, but yeah, we, we just uh, we, we got to get into it, I guess. We just need to go ahead and dive right in. There's been a lot of action going on. So many sports happening right now. Uh, really starting to dabble into a lot of different sports. We got hockey that returned. Been betting on postseason baseball. And then, of course, we're here to talk about motorsports news, though. So betting talk, everything else, you can find that on the Garage Guys NASCAR podcast. Make sure you subscribe to that. Follow and if you're uh, if if you do happen to catch this on YouTube or you're watching this on the new Garage Guys YouTube right now, go ahead and make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and drop a comment below. All those things help us to grow uh, this brand new channel where we're looking to bring motorsports entertainment to the world in our own way through our own minds, uh, the way that we see it, you know. And, and that's what we're doing here with the Garage Guys. We just want to paint a new beautiful picture. For what racing is, because it's badass and it's cool. And if anybody tells you otherwise, then they're a fucking liar. And it's the truth. So, yeah, I guess it's time to go ahead and just get into voicemails. But appreciate everybody for being around. Like I said, it's been, it's been a wild weekend. Shout out to them colleague boys, though. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll dabble into conversation about it once we get the voicemails kicked off. But let's go ahead and kick it off with our new Mr. October Caller of the Month. It is... The man himself, super NASCAR fan, Andrew. Here we go. Hello, Garage Guy Chase, super NASCAR fan, Mr. October. Thank you, everybody that voted for me. Um, No Mr. September for this year because that belongs to Harry Gant, who won four races in September. So, that will always be Mr. September, Harry Gant. But, uh... Uh, I wasn't able to watch much racing. However, I caught the highlights, saw that uh, A.J. Allmendinger was able to get a win, which is good, which is awesome for him. Uh, Sam Mayer ended up getting the win uh, Saturday and a must win for for, uh, for him to advance on to the playoff. Um, pretty much uh, uh, the Roval Road Course, though, it's it, – I, I kind of hate some of the penalties that they give for short time the chicane, especially when you spin out in said chicane. Uh, cough, cough, uh, bubble. But uh, I feel like they need to be a little bit more fa- fair there because he lost spots and still got penalized. Um, some people are saying that that, especially with the Roval will come back next year, some people think that if it comes down to it, 
some teams may use that to bump an opponent out of the way just to give them a penalty to uh, help a teammate advance onto the playoffs or something like that down the road. They, uh, could, they Penalties could be manipulated with how they have it now, although we haven't yet to see it because we haven't had a team in that desperate of a situation yet um, when it comes to the elimination race. Um, uh, pl- playoffs, uh, though, I think uh, with who we have left, and uh, Denny, he, he just might speed. It's, it's cool that we don't we only have two defending champions left, and that's Larson and uh, Truex. So we'll, we're most likely going to have a brand new champion this year. It would be cool to see uh, um, going into the season, nobody would probably say that, that this guy would probably become a champion, but I think it would be really cool if, uh, with the consistency he's had throughout the year that Chris Buescher, uh wins the championship. So we'll we'll see what what happens. It'll be cool for Roush to get back up there, um, and get another championship through through all their tough years that they've had recently. Um, so uh, thank you everybody for voting, and uh, talk to you again uh, next week. All right, that was Super NASCAR fan Andrew, Mister October himself, calling in a lot of good stuff in that call. Yeah, it seems to kind of be the story right now, uh, and, and I think it's just the time of the year, right? Football season kicks up, you know, hockey's back, postseason baseball. There's a lot of things going on. School starting back for people. It's a busy time of the year, so hearing that Andrew didn't get to catch much of the race definitely lets me know it's just everyone is hustling right now, and that's just how it goes, and that's okay. So definitely appreciate you guys for being here, tuning in and watching on Playback and on YouTube. Um, do want to kind of go into what you're talking about with the, the Roval, you know, with the penalties, I guess the way I look at it is like this. It's supposed to be a very challenging race, right? You want to, you, you want to be perfect. You want to make sure you're perfect out there on the track. These drivers have to be perfect, especially the playoff drivers. Your back's against the wall right now. And plus it's a cutoff race. So I don't necessarily mind the penalties. I think more than anything, um, you know, I, I expected there to be a lot more chaos than there was at this race, even with the stage cautions. But I honestly didn't mind it as much. It's just really what I've come to understand about it is just like a typical road course race where your fastest car usually is the one that wins as long as the strategy is right. They had their stops and they're on point. There is a strategy to the stage cautions as well. And maybe even a little bit more strategy to it. So I've kind of repositioned my stance on stage racing uh, after watching this race. Because usually week to week, what I'm realizing is that my emotions completely ride on whoever the fuck my money is on. And that's okay. And I think a lot of us can say that and speak to that. So moral of the story is uh, it, with the way that it's set up, it's just really taking a moment to just appreciating it for what it is. Knowing that it is here and it exists and uh, and just being happy with that and just that alone. And maybe that's me talking more to myself about it, but I, I needed to kind of explain how I felt after that race and my thoughts in connection with your call, Andrew. So that is uh, good stuff there. And yeah, talking about the championship, right? We have... Uh, We've only got two guys. I, I'm i not that big on Martin Truex Jr., I'm going to be honest with you. I, I just, if he does it, I guess I won't be surprised if he makes it to the, the Final Four. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But it just seems like there is this really strange lack of concern. And maybe it's just because I'm not watching enough 
post race interviews or hearing from him enough or and maybe it's just his personality in general i just i don't feel good about mtj um i didn't feel good about him at the roval i faded him it worked out great um you know looking at kyle larson the fact that kyle overcame what he overcame this past week was huge that shows that uh that he's got a real shot and i mean he's the, he's already lined up as the favorite for this race coming up uh this weekend in las vegas so i i i'm not gonna say that i don't think larson will be in the final four by any means i definitely think he will but in terms of someone new winning I mean, I did say at the beginning of the year, I like Chastain. He's gone now. He's eliminated. There's, it's whatever. So I got to pivot, right? I did pick up a future on Denny earlier in the season. So that's okay. That'll be my Phoenix bet more than likely. Um, and I don't mind Willie B. I think one of those two guys has the best shot. And, but honestly, like, I, I think I'm going to have a more of a, I'm going to have a better stance on it next week. After Vegas, I will know who who I'm like all in on. I'm not going to worry about Miami because I think Larson can get Miami easy. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about Martinsville. I think a Toyota will more than likely get that one. But it really just comes down to, to Phoenix and who's got, I really feel like the start of this round is going to be just super important. So I will come back to saying who I feel is going to win the championship and finalize it. Not going to come off of it or change it on next week's episode. So be alert for that. Uh, But yeah, I appreciate the call as always. It's Mr. October, super NASCAR fan, Andrew. We all know him. We all love him. He's in the discord and now you can hear him on the report. So thanks for calling. Let's go to our next caller. Uh, I found out that this caller uh, was who he was because he was from the Discord. So I'm just going to introduce him as Ozzy from the Discord. Here's Ozzy from the Discord. Yo, AJ Almondinger to victory lane and to the window. Had me a little 12 to 1 action to win. Uh, saw that you won some money, so that's good. Um, seems like everybody had a good day out there, Garage Guy fam, all cash. Good day in DFS. It looks like Willie B is going to be a problem. He might just have the car that the the nine did last year when uh, he won the championship. So we got to keep an eye on on the twenty four for sure. Uh, Omendinger is a, a road specialist, and uh, happy for him. You could tell he wanted it bad, and when he went up in the crowd, I was like, oh man, that was crazy. But happy for him. Um, everybody had a good week. Let's go. On to the next. I'm out. Appreciate the call, Ozzy. Good shit right there, man. Yeah, and I think this is where uh, I'm, I'm ready to kind of dive in and talk about AJ and Colleg. And, uh, you know, we did have a decent day. DFS is back, baby. It was nice. The majority of my winnings were from multipliers, though. I love multipliers. It's where you put, like, 10 bucks in. The top 20 win, like, 100 bucks. Um it, there is still the same amount of work that goes into it, but it's just a smaller pool, easier to win money. And the more you do this, the more you realize all that matters is winning money. So why not attack your best shots at winning money? So that's the way I'm looking at it now. As far as uh, AJ, though, and Kyle, like I, I do want to say this. So I had put a tweet out when Kyle Bush was there. I took a live bet on KFB. And, and I put a tweet out basically saying, it's time to be an asshole, Kyle. Like, you need to turn these dudes in front of you. It was Ty Gibbs and A.J. Allmendinger. Of course I wanted that to happen. I wanted my bet to cash. Uh, some people were online just, like, just like t- telling me, like, oh, this is a bad take. He's like, well, no shit, it's a bad take. I want to win fucking money, dude. Like, so, the yeah, internet's a, a, a fun place. It can be a very fun place. But uh, in terms of, you know, personality and racing, which is a topic we'll we'll get to. Um, I think Kyle does or should have at this point, it doesn't make a shit, but he had a shot He had a real shot. And, and, uh, I guess he just didn't have the car for it. Uh, I'm always going to be one of those people mentality and grit find a way 
I guess uh, not everybody is going to do that, and that's that's okay. That's fine. But when it does come to grit and it comes to the mentality, the winning mentality and, and just letting things flow, Colleg Racing and A.J. Allmendinger possess that more than just about any – any one that I know in that series, but th- there's a, a difference to it, right? I, I'm friends with a few drivers, and, and we're acquaintances with a couple of drivers. We've interviewed drivers on the the podcast. You know, I know a lot of these guys, and and not just the media view of these guys, the real guys, like who they are. And I can honestly say that I, I've spent a good bit of time with Chris Rice, a uh, little bit less time with Matt Colleg and a little bit less time with AJ Allmendinger. But when I am around them, the energy is just contagious. It's infectious, right? It, being around AJ and having conversations with AJ is like the most laid back, wittiest guy that I know probably that's older in the sport uh, that I've had the privilege to sit down and chat with. And to see a guy like him, the career that he's had, to be able to just get his position and not give it up for nothing says so much about who he is and his career and his life and like what he tries to go after and how he tries to attack. It was the ultimate colleague race and the emotion that came out of him after the race was just uh, incredible. You, I, I, for me personally, nothing shows more of a person than their ability to cry in public and not being afraid of that and not being worried about that. It's just the rawest of emotions. And so to watch him get to do that was fucking amazing because you just felt it. And it's like, you can't be mad at that. Like nobody can be mad at that. You know, I got to see AJ win at the Brickyard, the inaugural road course race in Indianapolis, which was awesome. And to see him be able to take advantage of the stage caution system and he had a good car too. It wasn't really even the stage caution thing. I mean, last year Colleg had good cars at this track. Like they just he's a he's a road course ringer. He's good at what he does. But that man fucking works. And Chris Rice works. And they grind and they hustle and they're just real. They're real people and they're fun people. They're funny. Just just the rawest human beings I probably have spent a good bit of time with and there's probably plenty more in the garage that are like that that i know but as far as just what i know and what i can speak to uh they deserved that win and they got that win and uh and they, they're hoisting that trophy now so really cool to see aj chris and matt all get to celebrate that and get that done trophy hunting as they say but i appreciate the call ozzy thanks so much let's go on now to uh forever and always mr july Casey Raysom. What's up? Casey Raysom here. Just wanted to say, I actually got to catch both the Xfinity and the, both Xfinity and Cup races at the Roval. Sam Mayer kind of had a domination show. He's kind of becoming the new road course king of Xfinity, so congrats to him. Then you got Cup. AJ Allmendinger, we just... I'm giving him a new nickname. He is the Roval King. He's won there. He won there in 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 in Xfinity. He won four straight times in Xfinity. He didn't. He decided not to run in Xfinity. But, you know, he's in Cup. He decides he's going to run the Cup race at the Roval and just fucking wins it there. He's like, fuck it. Congrats to Almondinger. He's the Roval King. And, you know, I just want to ask one quick situation's been up in the air. He's like, whether or not he wants to stay in the cup or Xfinity. He wants to stay in cup. Colleague doesn't know what he, they want to do. Do you think this win kind of boosts his chances and ups his chances to stay in the cup ride next year? What do you think? I'm Casey Raysom, and I'm out. Forever and always, Mr. July. Thanks for calling Casey Raysom, a.k.a. Hunter from Arkansas. Uh to answer your question, man, great call. Just quick shout out to Sam Mayer, by the way. Kids just develop balls like no other in the Xfinity series. Like he's coming. He's hungry. He wants it. He wants it all. Starting at the Glen. That's that that was the grit. That was the grit we wanted from Kyle, from Kyle Bush. 
when Sam just turned Ty Gibbs for that win at Watkins Glen. That's where it started. All right, go back and watch an older episode of the report, Tales of, from the Xfinity Book. You'll see it. Shout out to him. Big balls on Sammy Mayer. Um, do I think this improves AJ's chances of staying in Cup? No. AJ has had a long career. He's got a baby. He's got a wife. He's got things he wants to do. I don't think he's done racing by any means, but I don't think that this win is what is going to make him want to stay because he's had these wins, right? Like he had the win before he was full time. Um, and he's got this win now. He knows he can win at certain tracks. I think if anything, it was the drive of, him wanting to succeed at other tracks, which he kind of did that in the Xfinity series. And also you can't argue the fact that you hear so many drivers talk about how much more fun it is to race the Xfinity series than the cup series now because of the way the cars are. So I can see why maybe he would want to go because AJ seems like one of those kind of people where it's like, he's accomplished the things he cares to accomplish. And when you get to a point in life where certain things don't necessarily matter to you or you're not as hungry for certain things. Like you kind of find this balance of like who you are and where you are. You just kind of know what you want to do. And so I think that AJ is definitely the kind of person where a win isn't going to make him rethink his position. He knows who he is. He knows what he wants to do. And, and that's all that there is to it with AJ. That's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for calling. Uh, we're going to go to Logan uh, from Colorado. What's up, Chase? It's Logan from Colorado. Missed the race today. Had a family event. Had to go eat some food for the birthdays, and everybody was watching the Broncos, of course. Yay, the Broncos. Such a good football team. But I looked at the phone and saw P9 for number nine. Some more free fried pickles this week. You bet my ass I'll be at Hooters. So just wanted to call and say hell yeah to the free fried pickles. And fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. All right. Logan from Colorado. Didn't get to watch the race. Uh, went to a birthday party, watched a Broncos game. Sucks. Sean Payton getting what was coming to him the whole time. Should have never went there. Should have stayed at home. Should have stayed eating ice cream, watching Netflix. Don't know what you were thinking, Sean. Um, but, uh, yeah, shout out to Chase Elliott, P9 for the nine. Thought he was going to win there for a minute. Just got a bad fucking uh, break with the caution and had to pit with the points, boys. Not going to talk about it too much. Definitely felt like that was a, a race Chase could have took home, though. If it wasn't for that caution, I think things would have been a little bit different. They'd have been a lot more aggressive. Uh, Allen would have probably went a little bit harder with the strategy. I think they could have came through. I had a heavy amount of money on Chase Elliott to win, but not as heavy as your belly is after you get free fried pickles at Hooters. So shout out to you for mentioning the greatest sponsor of the Garage Guys, the greatest sponsor on earth for anything, Hooters. Promo code Garage Guys. Go eat at Hooters. Uh, We're going to go to our... Last call that I have this week is uh, Matt Dumpster from the Discord. Let's see what Matt has to say. Garage Guys, hey, Matt Dumpster calling in from beautiful Music City, Tennessee, USA. Uh, Monday morning, I uh, want to get some sleep in before I really kind of, you know, just let it, the dust settle, give my feedback on what was a race at the Roval. Uh, really disappointed for Red Dog. Uh, I, you know, a lot of us were heavy on him. I got him at eight to one before qualifying. Didn't necessarily hit, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. Got a long time left and he ran a great race, got himself into the round of eight, but just heartbreak all week. It, you know, the Red Dog train was wide and well. Shout out to Hannon's, Trevor, Spurs. Everyone else that was on it, Cobra was on it, if he's listening. Um, but, man, that just sucked. Uh, really thought he was going to have it. 
Uh, shout out to Almondinger. If anyone's going to ruin Reddick Day, you know, happy for the boys over at College Racing. That's just a cool, true race team. Love what they're doing over there. But, you know, moving on to Vegas, I think there's really only two men that are going to win this race. Actually, I'm going to give it three. <clears throat> I think there are only three guys, really, that I'm looking at this weekend, and that's William Byron, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Larson. Um, I want to throw Busher in there. I mean, he's been running well. He finished great yesterday, got that top 10 for us. But, you know, my whole thought process is that one of those three guys is just, I feel like they are just the dudes to win that, win the championship this year. Um, hopefully it's number 11. If not, I definitely anticipate seeing Hendrick going back to back at Vegas or maybe Byron going back to back at Vegas. We'll see. But, Hopefully we get a better race this weekend than we did last weekend, the Robo Snoozer. I don't want to focus too much negativity on that because there's probably a lot of people calling about the negativity about the Robo. The good news is that everyone I saw who went to the Robo had a good time. So if the fans were there and happy, that's what matters. So looking forward to getting back on an actual Oval, not a Robo, this weekend. And uh, see you all at Vegas. Bye. Hell yeah. Shout out Matt Dumpster from the Discord. Call from the beautiful TriStar. Uh, love to hear from you. Love that. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about the Red Dog deal. You know, I I didn't bet on Tyler. Um, and I did that because of the thought process. Like, and I talked about it on the space before the race on X. And I talked about it on playback during the race. I just felt that a lot of people were overlooking the fact that stage cautions were back and that also creates a lot of chaos, which we saw some, not much, but some, but it's really about, you know, how you run in that situation. Like the fact that Tyler stayed out, for stage points, I think was the smartest thing he could have ever done in the first stage because he knew, and like most other teams knew more than likely, like you just don't know, right? You just don't know at that track right there on the line, if you're trying to make a championship run, You got to play it safe. And I knew that by him staying out, other people were going to pit. And it could have got him, you know, and it did. It got him towards the back. And then you just kind of are like praying for cautions. You might can pass a few cars, but it's really tough to pass at a track like that. Um, And and it's been that way with mostly all the road course races this year. So those thoughts definitely kept me away from it so i hate that for everybody i didn't win an outright either this week i only know a couple like a handful of people that did with almondinger but that's why i kind of like made sure that i had uh some top 10 energy out there had some prop bets a couple little things to minimize the losses we didn't do terrible but yeah i i definitely went smaller you say that you think three guys are going to take vegas Kyle, William, Denny. I normally wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it on this show. The Garage Guys NASCAR podcast will be coming out, but I'm going to go ahead and give everybody here on the report my first bet of the week. I'm taking Ryan Blaney 14-1 to to win in Vegas. You remember last year. You remember how Joey Logano ran this thing. Now, I get it. Blaney wrecked. Logano's not in the championship hunt. Uh, he's been pretty good at intermediate tracks. They're going to be focusing all, all their effort on that car. I think Ryan Blaney can get it done in Vegas. Going to leave it at that. 14-1, to 1, bet MGM, I believe, uh, and bet Rivers. Mm, Caesars, too. Yeah, so there's a bet. First bet I'm giving out on the report. For you guys. Ryan Blaney. That's my first take. Uh, As always, I appreciate you calling them, Matt. Uh, 
appreciate everybody for calling, man. Thank you guys. Definitely uh, excited to to hear uh, some more voicemails next week. Whenever we get done in Vegas, as we're continuing forward to the championship, this is where it's it's going to get heated up a little bit. This is where football's kind of been brewing a little bit now, and everybody's starting to kind of blend and get used to the changes that the fall brings. So I'm ready for some fucking heat next week. I have a feeling this is going to be an, an amazing race. We'll be on playback.tv slash garage guys. And once the race is over, all week this week, once the race is over, the moment you get done watching this, the Garage Guys Report hotline is open. Your voicemail will be played. I don't care how many voicemails it is. With this new format that we have on this show, this show could go on for fucking hours. I want to play everybody's voicemail that calls in. So remember, the number to call, 919 769 Four four seven seven. Call that starting right now, all the way until the end of next Monday. Call it after the race, before the race. Talk about anything. Ask anything. Have opinions. Have a random thought. Maybe you wanted to tweet something, but you didn't tweet it. You just called it. You called it in, and it's here now on next week's episode. Worth a shot. Appreciate everybody. Thank y'all. Do have a couple of uh, news pieces that I want to get into. Uh, before we close out, uh, first things first, silly season. We've been calling this, it, it, it sounds fucking stupid. I'm going to be honest. This is, this is an opinion piece at this point. Uh, I can't stand the name silly season for uh, like trade moves. It would be considered trade moves in every other sport. The fact that we call our silly season, I feel like discredits NASCAR racing. I really do. It sounds like some shit that you would do like playing on Nintendo. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, why can't we just call it, uh, you know, NASCAR trade rumors? Uh, I, I don't know, maybe... Uh, maybe race moves, something. Something new needs to come. I don't have the answer right now. I'm not going to try to force one. If you have thoughts on like what we should call this silly season moving forward, drop it in the comments below. Let me know if you're watching uh, the live premiere on Playback right now. Hit us up in the, in the chat. If you have any thoughts on what we should call silly season, because I feel like it is just time for a change. That name sucks. It sounds like watching Barney when you were three. It sounds like Sesame Street. It sounds like the Wiggles, Teletubbies. Silly season is not something that belongs in one of the most high-octane, exhilarating sports known to man. Kill it. Get it out. Don't want it. No more. But we're going to talk about uh, some NASCAR uh, driver rumors uh, some some team signings, some moves, some NAS moves, if you will. Working on a NAS move. That sounds stupid, too. Um, Haley Deegan has been promoted to the Xfinity Series. She's going to run uh, with AM Racing, the number 15 Ford Mustang. A lot of people were talking about this. A lot of people, uh, this was some earlier in the week news when, when this dropped and came out. Uh, got a story pulled up about it uh, on, uh, believe it's autoweek.com, talking about where uh, she'll start running in 2024. There were a lot of people saying, oh, she's not ready. She's just getting this because, you know, she's Haley Deegan. Well, no shit she's getting this because she's Haley Deegan. I think any team that is smart from a marketing perspective would want to take Haley Deegan on. I mean, she has one of the most successful YouTube channels. She's one of the biggest names in racing. Every dude uh, in, in America that, like, doesn't know how to talk to girls is, like, looking at photos and running to the bathroom. Let's be honest. Uh, you know, it's a smart move for AM racing, and, and it's a part of her journey in racing. They're trying to get her to cup. They're wanting her to be the next female that runs in the NASCAR Cup Series. A development system is, is what it takes. I was looking at her stats, though. Looking at her statistics, I mean, we've seen 
drivers get into higher levels in the series with far less than what she's been able to do. She's had 67 races. She's had five top tens, led two laps via racing reference. That's not the greatest of stats, but there have been plenty other drivers that have done far less and been able to secure positions. That's all I'm going to say about it. I think that, uh, you know, it's good. It's good for her. It's good for her career. And I wish her the best. That's some news that dropped earlier. Uh, there was a rumor that dropped earlier on Tuesday. Uh, and it came out based on a podcast where Bob Pockers was on, Door Bumper Clear. And they were apparently the Noah Gragson thing got brought up. Uh, got the story pulled up right now, and of course the headline: "Silly Season Rumors." Noah Gregson to the ten car for Stuart Haas Racing. This is on DailyDownForce.com. dot uh, com. Apparently, here was the clip uh, that was speaking about it on the show. It kind of hit the NASCAR Reddit scene, but uh, yeah, I I don't mind this at all it's a rumor but if it's real you damn right i want to see noah gregson go to stewart haas racing let's take a look right now at all the major cup teams in nascar who has the best lineup for the grittiest boys it's stewart haas racing it's tony's team kevin harvick's on his way out you got josh berry an absolute dog race car driver you know we haven't really got to see you know much personality out of him and maybe he doesn't have much personality and that's okay he knows racing and he wants to race cars and that's all that counts he's good i think he's going to do well in the four chase briscoe another absolute dog from indiana dirt guy grew up idolizing tony stewart like him ryan priest possibly in my opinion the biggest dog on that team. Dude flipped through the air at Talladega, made a meme about it two weeks later, drove the Wonder Bread car with his buddy Chase Briscoe on the same team, pretending to be Cal Naughton while he pretended to be Ricky Bobby. That's a real motherfucker. We had him on the Garage Guys uh, Garage Talk podcast. Real motherfucker. Dude listens to gangster rap before he gets in the car. That's my dog. I love that guy. That's grit. There's no other team that Noah Gregson should be going to but Stuart Haas Racing. Noah Gregson belongs there. Noah Gregson belongs with this group. He does. Eric Amarola, his time has passed. You need to go. This is evolution. This is change. The lineup, Josh Berry, Chase Briscoe, Ryan Priest, Noah Gregson. That team goes hard. No shit. Not only does that team go hard, but I really just want to see Tony Stewart go to a Wendy's because if there's anybody out there that could possibly look like Dave in old age, it's Tony Stewart. I mean, could you imagine Tony Stewart just cussing out some dude at a Wendy's dressed up like Dave? That could happen with a Stewart Haas combination of Noah Gregson in the 10 car. Send Tony to Wendy's. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I like that one. I like that rumor. Shout out to Bob Prockers for, for talking about that on Door Bumper Clear. Uh, and then the latest uh, rumors of NASCAR trade talks um, and, and driver signings. Carson Hosevar officially announced he's going to the 77, the Spire uh, Chevrolet. Great. That's good stuff. Love Carson Hosevar. Great personality. Big hat guy. I think we all kind of saw this one coming, and now especially knowing that Trackhouse is kind of intertwined with them, I think really good things are yet to come. So I'm excited about the Spire move. I'm excited to see how everything starts to shake up. Uh, and, and, and I don't think there was anybody else better. And, and getting to know him more, just watching him on media, I haven't really got to talk to him in person, but maybe once. Uh, he, he seems like a really fun guy like the guy excited for him uh another non-driver uh piece of news that came out was that uh veteran matt uh matt kenseth veteran driver matt kenseth is going to be the new competition advisor for legacy motorsports uh once again just you know a picture of jimmy johnson 
and Matt wearing suits, casual suits with no ties, just really trying to build that NASCAR is F1 now presence at Legacy. Uh, that's what they want to do at Legacy Motor Club. Uh, and, and that's okay. I, I really, I don't mind this at all. I think this is good. I mean, you get some of these guys that are longtime winners and, and people that are understanding it. This is just the evolution of our sport. Uh, you know, and as time goes on now, especially with them being with Toyota, uh, I think Legacy really has a shot to uh, to take on the next phase in racing, which is grabbing championships, doing these things. They're, they're putting all the right minds in, and it's a such a new team, such a new molding where that's all it takes, right? It's time. It's just time. And we have new teams out there. You know, 2311 had a tweet, went out earlier today, and people were wondering, is, is, uh, is, is 2311 experiencing financial issues? Like, uh, are they having problems getting sponsors? I saw this tweet that came out, and I'm sure some of you have seen it by now. Uh, if not, here it is. But uh, it just really shatters my brain that some people just don't understand what it means to have Jordan on a race car. It's like having Apple on a race car. That's like having, uh, you know, what, what's another gigantic company? And just any major company in America, like, that's culturally important on a race car. So when Michael Jordan is a part owner of a team, you don't fucking ask if they're having financial issues because he wants to put his brand on the car. He paid for that. Technically, they're fine. He's just using that as a way to build. Do you know how many fans Air Jordan has from uh, just just a, a standpoint of just Michael Jordan himself, the Chicago Bulls, the 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 dominating performances, the championships, uh, the world renowned sneaker effect, and, and how people just buy a shit. So yeah, you want that on a car. You don't worry about it if they're having financial issues because let me just back up for a second. And I know I'm talking about, uh, you know, in relation to uh, Legacy being a new team, 2311 being a new team. I saw this tweet just trying to connect the dots, make sure I'm not losing anybody. But um, even with that question being asked on Twitter earlier today, 2311 is sponsored by Root. They were sponsored by Root Insurance for a minute. I don't know if they still are. But DoorDash is one of their major sponsors, which is a new tech company for restaurants. Huge. McDonald's is one of the major sponsors. Uh, Monster Energy, that's not going anywhere for a while. Coca-Cola is such a huge part of racing. Why would they? Uh, I don't understand why that question was even asked. And it just really confused me. Um, So when you look at 2311 in comparison to legacy their sponsors are a million times better regardless if that sponsor is one of the people that co-own the team or not you know that would be you know like who's to say jimmy johnson doesn't find a way to get lowe's back you know Uh, it these things take time so when you got a new team I, i just feel like more nascar fans need to just focus more on and i guess it's not my place to say what you should focus on. It really isn't. But I know for me, at least, I'm focused on what is good for the sport and what is bringing new eyes to the sport and also good for the existing fans of the sport. Because if there is one sport in America that you know for a fact you ain't going to please anybody, which basically is all of them, NASCAR seems to be the number one because they actually have shown that they kind of listen to what people are saying on X and what people are saying on Facebook and everywhere else. They listen to their fans a little bit. And I think every organization would be smart to do that. But just stop focusing so much on like the negative aspects of shit and focus on all the positive things that are coming from stuff like uh, an Air Jordan logo being on a race car. Like, did, did you ever think that we would see that? Like three years ago, four years ago, did you think that we would see that before... Uh, anything was announced with Hamlin and MJ. I didn't. I wanted to. And now it's here. And now we're asking if they're having financial issues when they have some of the largest sponsors that are worldwide and that are known worldwide. Just blows my mind. 
can't wait to see what happens with the, some of these new teams, including Legacy Motor Club and 2311. Just wanted to, to chat about that real quick. Um, so shout out to them. And uh, the last thing I wanted to bring up, I saw a clip on Instagram yesterday on Monday on the 9th of October, I saw this clip from Denny Hamlin's podcast, which I have not gotten to listen to in a while now, but uh, I've been seeing where Dirty Mo Media has been dropping the clips and Denny had an amazing soundbite from his podcast. Take a listen. Crazy. No one else has got the balls to be honest, you know, and, and it's not the driver's fault because they've clearly got white collar standing over the back of them, making sure that they don't do it. Like that's not good. That is stunting growth. That is stunting star power. And I believe we have stars in our sport, but they will never get seen because you've got that mentality looking over their shoulders. I am so happy that somebody said it other than me and other than other NASCAR fans and, and people that are in the NASCAR media that have podcasts and write and everything else, like we got a driver to say what we have all known for so long, finally. And it just continues to show me why I like Denny Hamlin, not just as a driver, but as a real motherfucker, a real human being. Because this podcast, I feel like, has changed him and given him growth in finding his voice in the sport he's always been a little outspoken it's definitely gotten a little bit more advanced through the years and and i know that nascar especially earlier in the season like it's almost like they're trying to pull the reins on him a little bit and he's just like i don't give a shit and i love that because if there's one thing that i know and that you know watching this listening to this right now it's that I care about the cultural revolution of NASCAR and I want to see NASCAR back on top. I want to see NASCAR discussed on Sports Center every night. I want more TV shows and, and channels dedicated to racing. Uh, you know, however that comes in, in this century, like Flo's doing a great job. Uh, and you have a couple of other areas and outlets that are doing it for racing. But Denny just really drilled it in. And I think that what he's doing on that show is really starting to give drivers more confidence and it's getting fans to ask more questions. We all know what he was saying and there's people that can speculate on who's doing what and who is keeping drivers held back and things like that. And I'm not going to speak so much into that, but what I am going to speak into is that is the golden ticket. Letting people be themselves, exploring new ideas, taking more risks. When you look back at Dale Earnhardt Sr., he made himself almost a caricature of himself, which has transcended time and why he is still talked about today being a legend. Like, I feel like you hear more worldwide, you hear more about Dale Earnhardt than you do Richard Petty. And I don't know if necessarily if that's because he passed away in 2001 and the way that he went and left. I think it is bigger than that. And I think if he would have lived, it's, he still would have been bigger because of his outspokenness, his villainous persona. He made it a show, but he also um, was respected by his peers. And that is the kind of thing that we've been lacking. And Denny has really stepped up to that role. He did it at Bristol. And, you know, it, it comes and goes in waves, right? comes and goes but when i ask people now about nascar drivers like like that don't watch the sport like who do you know who do you know of as a nascar driver i get dale dale earnhardt dale earnhardt jr jeff gordon chase elliott denny hamlin that's the five names that will come up in the majority of conversations that i have with people that don't watch on a weekly basis 
And what he's speaking to is there's so many personalities in this sport right now that should be way more well-known, that should be discussed the way we discuss NFL, NBA, and MLB players. And he's so fucking right. He couldn't be more right. I know guys that are in that sport right now that have really fun personalities. And they're reined. They're kind of reined in because they don't allow them to dial in to, to that. And they don't, they don't create environments for them to succeed with them being themselves. You know, like I'll, I'll speak to this really quick. Like one thing about Chase Elliott, right? A lot of people say, you know, he's kind of dry, this and that. Da, da, da. I've got to hang out with him a few times. He's sarcastic as fuck and it's hilarious. And I feel like if that was dialed into a little bit more, um, you know, it would, uh, he's already one of the most well-known guys, but it would open up so many more doors. Ryan Priest, you know, I feel like he could be one of those guys just off of his personality alone, but we haven't got to that point to where that's being dialed up yet. And I have a lot of hope, especially now, way more than I did before about the future of these drivers getting to be a little more of them and taking a little bit more risk. And I should have mentioned as well, Bubba Wallace is another name. So that's six guys, six guys I'll hear from the majority. But when you really think about what it is with them, you know, I hear Bubba way more. And that's because he was a part of something uh, culturally renowned, like especially in 2020, the BLM movement, uh, Trump was talking shit to him. He got in the, he got out of the NASCAR news cycle and into the world news cycle. Dale Sr. was able to do that. Jeff Gordon was able to do that through their sponsorships and their brand promotions. It's just like everybody now is just so scared of losing money. Of what they say and how they say it because of how the internet has allowed everyone's opinion to matter when that's not how it should be. My opinion is just as valid as a homeless dude down the street or uh, a guy that is, uh, you know, running a, a, a baseball uh, company talking about NASCAR. It's an opinion. Everyone has one. But I can say that if you don't try new things and you're always afraid of loss or afraid of a negative outcome, how do you expect to move forward? And like Denny said, experience growth. How do you expect things to change if you just keep going in this cycle? It's just really all about allowing new things and new ideas and to, to grow and to flourish. And that only happens by letting people be themselves. So you're not going to please everyone doing that. But when you stop worrying about pleasing everyone and you start allowing more people and more drivers to do these things and you start allowing more people to come in that have these kind of big different ideas you're going to shake shit up and you never know when that next thing is going to come that is going to just take off like a rocket and it could be the least thing you suspected it to be that could be the catalyst for that so uh, i have a lot of faith i love the fact that denny's got this podcast and i really do think that we're going to start slowly seeing improvements and changes because not only do we have all of you know a, a few there's a handful of people that will get into these topics. But the fact that you have someone being outspoken like Denny right now, like Denny knows he's got a legacy that he can build and he can run on if he wants to. And he's attacking it. And I just have a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for him for that. And uh, that's really all I have to say about it. But uh, I appreciate you watching the show. Thank you for, for being here and being a part of this. I uh, want to encourage everybody, again, if you're watching on playback.tv slash garage guys right now, uh, go to the YouTube page, the new YouTube page after this. Subscribe. Share it with one person that you know today. 
um, and, and share this show with one person you know today. Maybe they'll enjoy it. And, uh, and, and that's how we're going to keep growing. And that's how we're going to make this the number one uh, internet sports news show uh, for motorsports, you know, for all motorsports. I believe the show can be that. And, uh, and I'm excited about it. And every week that I get to talk, I find my voice a little bit more uh, with you guys and sharing that. And it, it's just going to keep getting better and better. So thank you. Be sure to call the hotline, 919-769-4477. I want to know your thoughts, opinions on anything racing at all. And if there's something I missed here that was some big news, get into the Discord. It's free. Go to the Reports channel. Drop it in there on a weekly basis. Uh, I'll review it, and uh, we may just talk about it next week. So, again, thanks so much for watching. This has been the Garage Guys Report. Motorsports news for you. One, two, three, four. Garage Guys Report. Garage Guys Report. It's the Garage Guys Report. Most sports news for you. It's the Garage Guys Report. It's the Garage Guys Report. Yeah. It's the Garage Guys Report. Yeah. It's most sports news for you.